Welcome to another edition of Anglican Unscripted, episode 360, the Christmas week edition. I'm Kevin Coulson. I'm George Conger. Today is December 29th, the Feast of St. Thomas, I think. No, that's right. You got it. And <laughs> it's 2017. Welcome to another program of Anglican Unscripted. I want to thank you for joining us during Christmas week. A lot going on. Uh, a lot of people watch the show because you know, you got two people who are friends and personalities talk about the weather once in a while. Certainly talk about our parents too much. Once in a while, if our wives aren't home from work, we'll talk about them. Um, but people have been asking, hey, what do you guys get for Christmas? I got uh, lots of things from the kids, uh, some pictures and alcohol, of course. Don't know why, uh, George. What'd you get? I got undershirts from my uh, my mother. Oh boy! Well, my no, I mean the weather, the weather down there. You, that's something that you'd want, isn't it? Oh well, yes, indeed. I mean, I I have a fairly limited wardrobe. Usually, I am <laughs> dressed in black head to toe. And uh, during the summer, I go through three t-shirts and you know, change at lunch, you change at dinner, and because of just the heat and humidity. Yeah, the humidity um, in Florida is. We get to talk about the weather. I, I've never been, except for Singapore, a more humid place uh, on Earth. But, you know, right now it's in the low 70s, and it's 95% humidity. And for me, it's freezing because it's so humid and cold for us. Here. Hmm. I've got my uh, fleece Anglican unscripted jacket. We're not selling those anymore, are we? No, we never sold them. Yeah, oh. we, we have to keep ourselves within tax laws. Okay. I do not ever want to fill out the 990 long form, which you give to the IRS if you uh, are not for profit every year. And I'd have to pay an accountant uh, 1200 or 1500 bucks to go through all the stuff we've done and uh, justify this, justify that, and put column, column, column. Um, and if we go big for advertising and go big for other types of uh, income, uh, you end up filling up the 990 form. Don't want to do that. We get to because we make less than uh, thirty thousand a year. Fill out the nine ninety easy form. Do you want to know how many uh, different items you get to fill out? How many? You fill out the name of your ministry. You fill out your uh, the head of the board. Uh, how much you made or took in for income, your expenses, and it's about the size of a postcard. And you can do it electronically, and just you, you click send. Then you get a letter from the IRS saying, oh, we've received your 990 easy form. That's all I ever want to do, George. Yeah. Will the new tax laws affect how much we can take in? Or have you had a chance to look at uh, that? No, we a still wise get, financial. Yeah. Uh, we as a not-for-profit can take up to, I think, 50000 uh, without filling out the long form. And, uh, oh, that's great. It's yeah. great. But we can't really go selling products or selling uh, <clears throat> swimsuit calendars. Uh, and other things uh, because you, you, you're getting to the point where they're like well now it's you know a little bit more involved I can't you know sell advertising on the show so as long as we keep it simple and just income and expense uh, all goes well which also I don't know if I told you this but this morning on our little PayPal account we've been getting donations because people are doing year-end donations it is my obligation as the uh, founder and uh, head honcho here at Anglican TV to let you know where you can donate. You go to anglican.inc forward slash donate. There's two or three different options on how to uh, send us money. You can certainly post data check. We would honor that. If you click on the PayPal button, you can help pay for expenses next year. George, I think we're going to GAFCON 3. I don't know. Do, we want to bring Gavin, yourself, my, and myself. I'm thinking a total of maybe seven to, to nine thousand dollars to get us all there. Is that about right? Three thousand a per you know, you figure a thousand for the airfare, mm -hmm. seven fifty for Gavin. We have no clue what the per, per night cost is for food and lodging from the Gafcon people. And then there's uh, uh, walking around money, uh, to which we bribe uh, <laughs> Yeah, <people>. we bribe <laughs> But not the not the members of Gaf when uh, when we went to uh, Dar es Salaam we used all the donations wisely, and therefore we got through. Uh, we got through the metal detectors at the airport. That was so uh, good. <laughs> we got to the VIP lounge, uh, waving a fistful of shilling. And, well, we uh, maybe we shouldn't be saying this. No, I mean we had the only pool footage of Roland Williams meeting with the leaders of um, uh, Tanzania at the time because President we bribed Tanzania. our way into the airport, and that was your idea. I'm like, you can't do that. You're like, watch. 
<laughs> oh, yes. Kevin, I've been to Af- I've been to Africa several times, and I sort of uh, my first trip to Nigeria, uh, I came through customs, and the uh, and the uh, cust and the uh, customs agent said to me, "Are you bringing any presents?" I said, "Well, I've never been to Nigeria before. I don't know anybody. I'm here on a church trip." He said, "You don't have any presents for me." And I, fig- <laughs> and I figured oh. out. I figured out. That uh, that if I parted, made a a love offering to the customs officer, my camera and my laptop would not be held as uh, customable duty. Uh, I had the same trouble coming back from Egypt when I was in the customs line, and they figured out really quick that my camera was not a consumer camera, and they were quickly talking about how much it would. Uh, talk of uh, how much it would cost me to get that through customs back to America and I kept repeating what they said louder and louder you want 500 you need 600 and finally just, they pushed me to the side you know <laughs> they didn't want the uh, the the aggravation that I was causing and I I was stupid I could have ended up in jail for the week who knew well they, yeah. they could have uh, asked Mrs. Colson about the aggravation you caused and uh... oh she's got the list it's alphabetized Oh boy. Uh, so if you want to donate to the program, you got to do it before the year end to uh, get the new tax benefits. I'm not sure uh, how the donations are affected by uh, Trump. Uh, I'll have to talk to my accountant by, about that. But uh, if you feel the need, and you probably do, uh, to donate, go to anglican.inc forward slash donate and, and help us get to GAFCON. George, let's move and, on. And uh, Kevin, yeah. and Kevin, we do need to get Gavin a space heater. I'm sorry, it's just, but you know, it's not that he's got a blue light in no, that studio. His case. face is a blue. <laughs> it's, <laughs> and he, it's the, li- the lips go England. blue, and you start to shiver, and I'm like, oh boy. Yeah, we, it's we should not get. That he's become all. He's not. It's not that he wants to show off to the world how Catholic he is by wearing twelve layers of vestments. That's how he keeps warm while we film. <laughs> well, it, it was a great blessing that his wife let him film uh, yesterday's episode inside, so um, he, he was warm and got to talk about all the, the fun news from England. Let's talk about uh, some international news, George. Um, there has been elections in Tanzania. Um, there's more going on in Kenya and future stuff going on in Rwanda. Let's uh, lay out for Tanzania first. Well, uh, we've been talking about the Valentino Mokiwa case for several years now. Uh, former Archbishop of Tanzania, one of the original Gafcon primates, mm-hmm. uh, he lost re-election uh, to the current Archbishop of Tanzania, and there were lots of uh, charges of fraud and bribery and corruption and uh, which we all reported at the time, and, and the official Anglican news services say, oh no, it was a movement of the Holy Spirit accompanied by dollars being wired from the United States that uh, swung this election. Um, well, long and the short of it was, Mokiba had always been at loggerheads with the new archbishop, and the new archbishop finally nailed Mokiba for corruption, and he was kicked out, and there was a long legal battle and church battle, and but last week, a new bishop of Dar es Salaam was consecrated, so the Makiwa, Valentino Makiwa saga is over. The saga is over. I mean, it was a long-term internal fight. Uh, the Church of England sent people in there to try and work with the dispute. GAFCON sent some people in there to try and work with the dispute. Non-GAFCON entities that were in, interested in uh, making this all go away went in and said, can you guys just work it on out? And there was just no way to do it. Now we're on to a different chapter. So Well, the, on paper, the new Bishop of Dar es Salaam may look pretty good to American conservatives because he's a graduate of Trinity Seminary. However, however, <laughs> there are, well, there are always stories about uh, Anglican bishops in Tanzania. The church does not have a good reputation for financial probity. Mm-hmm. Um, the part of the difficulty for GAFCON uh, the pro- the primates council was when they were trying to referee the dispute between the old and new archbishop is that they knew that both were crooked uh, and so it was hard to find winners and losers here because bo- neither one of these people are people whom you would want to put forward as models of uh, godly episcopal leadership so the recently the bishop of victoria nyanza in Tanzania, on the other side of the country, mm-hmm. was removed by the House of Bishops, 
and he's telling his supporters in the United States from whom he raises money, oh, it was a political movement, it was the Freemasons, it was tech money that got rid of him. The reality was, it was that his own clergy had been complaining that he was a crook for years, was not was keeping their salaries. And the House of Bishops finally got its act together and got rid of the guy. So, one of the hard things for people who are well, I, I won't comment on that, but not all African bishops are saints. Uh, uh, we can apply that to America, Europe, Church of England. Uh, that's kind of a standard going around. There's just different levels of corruption. Yeah, uh, but you know, when we had the excitement, citing times of the formation of the Anglican Communion Network mm -hmm. and African bishops coming in to save the day, that was really exciting, and some people just looked at these African bishops as if they could walk on water. Some of them are mm -hmm. and, and were. Uh, I don't think there's a finer man of character I've met than Henry Rombi, for mm. instance. And Peter Akinola truly is a giant of the faith. Yeah. Not everybody's Henry Rombi or Peter Akinola. Uh, we see this in Kenya, for instance. Uh, the new, there's nothing bad about the personal integrity of the new Archbishop, Jackson Oli Sapin. However, Archbishop Jackson does not have the uh, leadership skills at, that his predecessors had. And what we're seeing is a fallback to the bad old days. They have recently had presidential elections and there were a number of newspaper articles where bishops of the Anglican Church of Kenya are being given cars by candidates from the other side and they're telling these people, this is God's anointed, vote for Rala Odinga or vote for uh, Uhuru Kenyatta because God is on their side. Uh, I mean, it's only the Church of England that should get involved in politics like that. Yeah, uh, that's, that's a thing. Like, well, no, I, I, am, I don't think the Bishop of Liverpool gets cars from Donald Trump. I'm not going to name provinces, but uh, I'm certainly friends on Facebook with a, a many bishops from Africa uh, who are either pro gay friend or not pro gay friend? Just you know, at some point, somebody with a purple shirt wants to friend you, and I see lots of postings that seem to be uh, prosperity gospel uh, initiatives, and I'm like, you know, we need to get our act together uh, in some part parts of Africa because they're not teaching uh, what they claim to be teaching, George. And it's not helped by Lambeth Palace and the Anglican Consultative Council, mm -hmm. because Justin Welby and Josiah Wadawi Farone like to talk a big game about corruption. But it's corruption, They, if there's corruption and it works for their purposes, then they ignore it. We saw that with the, bri with the uh, scandal of Bishop of Nairobi forging the Archbishop of Kenya's signature so we could go to the... Uh, ACC, ACC meeting yep. in Lasak. Well, that was a clear-cut case. You and I spoke on the record with uh, Archbishop uh, Eliud Wabakula, who told us this, and we had we were given the copies of the documents. It was as open and shut a case of uh, fraud as you're going to get in the church world. And the ACC's uh, Secretary General said, "Oh, this is all lies, scandal, fabrication." And we're going to elect this guy to the uh, Lambeth Conference Design Committee. We're going to elect him to the ACC Steer Standing Committee. Uh, yeah. This this guy's a crook. Yes, he is. Uh, and and when when uh, Justin Welby put together the uh, panel of not the panel of reference. Those are the good old days of Rowan <laughs> <Yes>. Williams. <laughs> when Lanson. he put together that, that, <laughs> that group to monitor the Episcopal Church yep. to make sure they were on the up and up, and it later became a happy, clappy uh, encounter group. Uh, one of the people he put on there was the primate of South India. Well, the problem with the primate of South India was that he was under criminal investigation. Not just church, but criminal investigation for fraud. <sighs> uh, and he was quietly dropped. Um, and I, I guess where I'm going with all this is that, friends, when you deal with the African church as you deal with the American church, we are very, we can spot hucksters. We turn on the TV, we see Jim Baker, he's returned. Uh, you can even go and find on UH, they don't have UHF anymore, but this, 
<laughs> All the way at the bottom of the cable box yes. <laughs> in our area is the Trinity Broadcasting Network. Oh, and you get these guys uh, mm -hmm. with bad hair and bad suits. Jesus wants you to send me $1,000 and you'll be rewarded tenfold with a lot of numbers. We can spot those guys. But we can't as readily spot those same people in the other parts of the world because we don't have our cultural antenna. And sadly, some of them are Anglican bishops. Mm, indeed. Um, well, let's. We just did Tanzania. We should probably give the update on Kenya as well. Well, for instance, uh, uh, Mombasa uh, just had an election. The bishop retired after 24 years. Mm hmm. And the bad old days are back where uh, the defeated candidates have filed suit in civil court to block the uh, uh, installation of the newly appointed, a newly elected bishop. And we've got this ongoing case in Mount Kenya West where the bishop got rid of his defeated adversary in the Episcopal election, accusing him of being a homosexual and defrocked him and three other men. And it turned out to be a kangaroo court and the civil courts threw it out and awarded damages to the three priests well the church saying we can't pay it we refuse to pay it it's going to the supreme court of kenya so and the thing is that the the secular newspapers make hay with this all yes, the they time do. it's and you know they it's just oh kevin you know what i'm trying to I say i do uh, well i mean that's the hard part of the news we have to talk about is you know we're in this obviously to report news and we report our slanted analysis of the news but you know not everything uh about uh africa england african anglicanism is perfect or european anglicanism uh certainly american uh episcopal anglicanism drives us crazy but uh you want open and honest reporting and that's why we have to sit down every once in a while and talk about the hard stuff and this is the hard stuff because at the end of the day, we run into these people a lot you know at the end of the day it's the same issue it's corruption mm -hmm. whether it's theological corruption or financial corruption um it, or giving up your giving up the bible in favor of popular cultural beliefs because you want to be relevant you want to be popular you want to be loved you want to have a job Corruption is a universal problem. It is. And uh, yeah. you just shouldn't think it only applies in the United States. No. Now, people have heard some noise in the background here. I have a live studio audience today from uh, Sandpiper Crescent. You have your dog. I have my daughter's dog. Yeah. Yes. Uh, he, he was did. yapping in the pre-show. Well, uh, he is a, he has been, my wife and two daughters are up in Philadelphia, and mm -hmm. I am babysitting uh, t my daughter's cat, my other daughter's dog, and my wife's cat, and all three have been sticking to me like glue the entire time, but the dog goes with me to work and doing pastoral visits, and he is, uh, well, he's not baptized, so I don't actually take him to church, <laughs> but he stays in my office during the service. Now, how many services did you do this week? Uh, well, formal services, six. Uh, we did six, Christ Sun Advent 4 and Christmas, we did six services. And then uh, I spent uh, two days on my LEM team visiting about two dozen people who are housebound or in nursing homes. Ah. And you still have time for the whole communion who watch our show. Thank you, George. I really do appreciate that. But, you know, it was fun. We had a midnight Christmas, well, 1030, yeah. uh, Christ, Christmas <laughs> Mass. So we finish at midnight. But uh, and we, use, this, uh, we use incense on Christmas Eve and the Great Easter Vigil. Right. And it was packed where we had to put chairs in the aisles, uh, the folding chairs next to the bigger folding chairs. Yes. <laughs> the padded versus the non-padded. <laughs> and uh, but watching the body the steam rise off the people because it's it's very humid but it's cold meaning it's in the si high 60s low 70s uh which we all know in florida that's parka weather you it's know. very cold plus we have the incense going mm -hmm. plus we have the doors closed and man uh i it was now you know why i need more undershirts <laughs> i gotta change between each service Wow. But we had, we, it was really, uh, 
I had a Christmas Day service at one of our nursing homes, and we have about uh, 30, about three dozen people attend that service when we do that. And that's a difficult service because, you know, when you're working with people with uh, dementias, mm -hmm. you, know, you do a lot of singing, you do a lot of uh, impromptu stuff. And when somebody decides they want communion and they don't want communion, then they fight over it. Uh, yeah, it, it's that then uh, uh, Kevin nobody wants to know about the tra travails of a country vicar I mean you know. <laughs> no I think it's interesting is uh, uh, our our clergy up here usually do one or two services and uh, they, oh, I'm just so busy I gotta do you know I, I, I know a guy who has to do six so I, I do like to uh, talk about that once in a while George we're but up the, against what the, the issue we're, we're up against is that we, we've we been growing very, very rapidly, but we've hit the wall of we've run out of space. Mm -hmm. And we need to figure out, because we've got the 8 o'clock, what the 8 o'clock service, we have to move the 8 o'clock service to another time to add in another regular right to service. But people don't like change. Well, has Yeah, has anybody broached the topic of a new building yet? Because they'll be hated. Yeah. Uh, we have actually the lowest, one of the lowest per capita pledge total. The average in the Episcopal Church is almost about three thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Our average pledge is about eight hundred. Now we're able to make it go because we have a huge base. We have a very high ratio of people giving, but we don't have any wealthy. Uh, yeah, nobody can just write the check. Yeah. Uh, well. Maybe maybe this will be the year that Great Uncle Clarence pops off. Who knows? Jeez. <laughs> I'm Kevin Carlson. And I'm George Conger. And you've been watching episode 360 of Anglican Unscripted.